Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to everyone who is standing. Can I suggest uh, it's important to come in. Uh, to, there is room to stand here. Maybe 10 people can stand here. Yeah, can, please come. And uh, maybe 10 along here. Please come. Plank, please come. Quickly. <laughs> please come. Uh, we want you to come forward. Please. Yeah. Uh, down to here. Please. Uh, да, Патрик приглашает вас подойти чуть-чуть поближе. У нас здесь вот есть небольшое место, если хотите, здесь можно постоять. Ему будет приятнее просто, если вы uh, будете, так сказать, внимать. Патрик, uh, there, uh, there is a bar and chairs over there. This is the reason why they are standing there. Okay. All right. It's great to be here in Russia again. I have been here many, many times, uh, both in, uh, for business and also for humanitarian reasons. Uh, helping to uh, fight the spread of the virus HIV and to stop AIDS in cities like Togliati and Samara and things like that. So it's great to be here. I'm going to go on a journey into the future. And my question is, where will the next 100,000 entrepreneurs be? Uh, what businesses will they be? How, uh, how will we make money? And who will succeed? Uh, who will be the famous people in Russia in 10 years' time? And uh, here I have some answers. The first, it's really easy to be blind, not to see. I give you an example uh, from a restaurant. Imagine you are in the best restaurant in Moscow, okay? Fantastic wine, amazing food, but you cannot Get the waiter's attention. Put up your hands if you had that problem, okay? <laughs> Terrible. Fantastic restaurant. But the waiter is looking at the floor. <laughs> How much does it cost to train the waiter to look up? I used to be a waiter in a restaurant when I was at university. And I learned when I use my eyes and I smile, I make money, okay? Champagne, sweet, coffee, the bill, <laughs> more, more wine. And then I get the wine, champagne, coffee, sweet, coffee, sweet, champagne, the bill, wine. Mm -hmm. Every time I smile, I make money. <laughs> okay. How much does it cost to teach a waiter to look? Nothing. How long does it take the waiter to learn? Two minutes, how long for the waiter to realize he makes double the money at night? Two hours. How long for that startup to go from loss into profit? One night. Okay? Small things really matter. My friends, my first startup was a digital startup When I was 21, okay, I learned small things make the profit. Small things make the difference. It really, really matters. Let me show you another example. You see, it's so easy to be so excited about my technology and uh, my, my robots and uh, my TV show and all these things, but unless the customer is really excited as well, it's finished, okay? <laughs> so it's really important. Here's another example. I was staying in a hotel, a five star. I woke up in the morning. I was so tired, I could hardly walk. I went into the shower and I had a disaster, okay? I had a shower by accident with hair conditioner. Not shampoo, but hair conditioner, okay? As full of sticky stuff. <laughs> Put up your hands if you too have had a shower in hair conditioner by mistake. Okay, yeah, you see, it's easy. I had 800 CEOs of huge hotels in my audience, and I discovered that 25% of all the CEOs of the biggest hotels in the world, they also go into showers in their hotel and they wash themselves in hair conditioner by accident. How, why? I tell you why, because the text on these bottles is too small. 
I cannot read it without my glasses, and I don't have my glasses in my pocket, it's in my jacket, and I don't wear them in the shower, okay? <laughs> Tiny things really matter. How much does it cost to print larger letters on the product? Zero. So, my friends, if you want success as a digital entrepreneur, look for small things that make magic. Here is another example. I was in Greece. I was talking about the future of retail, e-commerce, shopping malls, Amazon, Alibaba. I was in a huge place, a shopping mall that cost hundreds of millions of rubles. But you know what? There were no chairs, nowhere to sit. <laughs> I said, listen, you can talk to me about digital innovation, entrepreneurial startups, smart tech, robots, e-commerce, but listen, go and buy a few chairs. How much does it cost to buy just one chair? How many rubles? Put up your hands if you have looked for a chair when you were shopping. My friends, how crazy to spend a 500 million rubles on a new store and not spend <laughs> 100 rubles per chair. Crazy. So listen, if you want success, look for the small things. Here is an example. Put up your hands if you own a 3D TV. No one. Oh, one or two. You know, give them a round of applause. Clap them. Why? Please stand. You see, you have, you have something which is so rare, it will be in the Moscow Museum of Digital Tech. You know why? No one makes them anymore. It's finished. There are no more 3D TVs in the shops. You know why? Because, <laughs> because you can create wow. You can create excitement. You can create techno genius. You can have media headlines about robots walking in the road and make no money. <laughs> okay? Because wow is not the same as magic. Magic is looking the customer in the eye. Magic is printing text on the side of the bottle so you can read it. Magic is spending a hundred ribbles on some chairs. You get the idea, okay. So magic is, well, you better get this right. You see, you can be smart and completely fail. So let's connect with the customer and now we will see the future. Oh, here's another one. Put up your hands if you have at home augmented reality glasses. Okay, one or two. Put up your hands if you really want to buy this for Christmas. Okay, 2%. Two out of 100. <laughs> what about the rest? This technology was supposed to change the whole world if forever. I'm just saying, connect with passion. Let's look at the real world, 3D printers. I have a 3D printer at home, but I am tired of printing shoes <laughs> or toys. <laughs> I would like to print spare parts for people. I am a physician, a doctor of medicine, and this is very exciting to print cells using your own body's tissue to build a new part to put inside you. Fantastic. Okay, here's another one. I can tell you, uh, we have the technology now to take a chip and to open your head and put it inside your head. We have done this for 15 years and it works really well. We can send messages, wireless, from one human being. What is your name? Arena. We can send them all the way to another human being. What is your name? Huh? Abina. We can send from one. You can send a message to her just by thinking. So one human being can use the eyes of another human being, maybe, to see what they see. Or maybe to learn a new language. Listen. We are doing these experiments in animals, 
Put up your hands if you would like such a chip inside your head. Put up your hands if you do not want such a chip inside your head. Okay, listen. I've shown you the future of wireless. I've shown you the future of mobile. Get rid of the interface and communicate direct, person to person, using digital tech. Very nice. But you have told me no. What you have shown me is that the most important thing in digital is not innovation. It is not whether you can uh, put the cells from a human body's brain into the chip, but it's emotion. It's passion. It's engagement. It's the magic. We see this over things like plastic in the ocean. All kinds of companies are now stopping the use of plastic to protect the environment. We have seen it in emotional reactions to robots. And small things create a big difference. When you have a positive media report or a funny story, emotion is created. So we focus on the customer's real needs, not what you think they are. Not because, oh, I've got this technology. It will be so good for you. No. We start with the customer. We say, Sergey, what is important in your life? And then when we understand what's important in your life, then we say, now, what could we create? What could we create for them? Most entrepreneurs start the other way. They say, create, create, create. Oh, look at this. This is so exciting. Look at this. I say, yes, thank you. Look at this. Maybe I buy it, maybe tomorrow. Look at this. No, we start from the customer. We stay with the customer. The customer is the center of everything. And make sure you sell services as well as products. Listen, in Russia today, I make a prediction. I have been predicting trends for 30 years, and I am usually right, okay? So I make a prediction about you sitting here. I guarantee that most of the new companies in tech that start from here, from this room, in the next five years, most of the great ones will be services, not product. Not to create the device, but teach people how to use it. This way, you can take all the technologies in the whole world and bring them in. So you can take the latest... Uh, software tools from Google and teach every company in Moscow to use them. You can take the latest mobile payment platform from Alibaba and teach the largest corporations in Russia to use it. Of course, you can also create Russian product and sell it to the world. But I tell you this, for most people here, it's a lot easier to teach people how to build mobile payment websites, okay? And it's huge really profitable, and really needed. If you want to know what most people need at the moment, it's help to use their mobile phone, help to work out how to make the system work, help when we have a disaster on the IT platform. Please help me, and please do it fast. If you want one big thing, it's this, speed. Anything you can speed up will earn you money. I tell you, one second can earn you a hundred million dollars. Let me tell you why. Google tells us that in Moscow today, because they see your searches, 70% of you in this room, you press the back button on a slow web page in just how many seconds? Three. In three seconds, you go from one second, you are irritated. After two seconds, you wonder if Moscow is being attacked by the North Korean governments and taken out the whole of the internet. After three seconds, you have lost the will to live and you terminate the entire business relationship, correct? Okay, so how long do your children wait? My children are waiting to 1.5. How long does my grandchild wait? She is four years old and she waits 0.5 of a second before she presses the back button. I'm saying every second counts. How quickly the phone is answered. How quickly the web page loads. How many steps from seeing the product to completing the purchase. Every second really matters. If you want to make 
100 million dollars take 50 seconds out of a complicated process online for a big company and you've made it already. This three second test is fundamental. How quickly can we get out of this store? I was there in Moscow yesterday. It looked like 20 minutes wait just to talk to someone in the shop. Oh my goodness. Uh, how quickly to answer the phone? So you phone up, you get press one for accounts, press two for customer services, press, put up your hands if you find that very annoying. Put up your hands if you think that people who put in these robot systems should be put in prison in Moscow for a very long time. Yes, give them a round of applause. Yes, put them in prison. Okay. Now, I'm not going to ask you if your company has such a system. You see, we can be blind. With the left part of my brain, I think about all the money I can make for my customer, and I install an automatic robot to save me money. On the right side of my brain, it's coffee time. I'll phone the company to book the holiday. Hey! They are making me push one of these things. I want to kill them after three seconds. You see what I'm saying here? Forget this left part of your brain. This is where you do your digital, your innovation, you solve your problems. It's very clever, but who cares? Who cares? Remember what it feels like when you, five minutes later, you're out of the meeting and trying to be a human being. This is where you find the genius. This is where you find the billion dollar company. This is why Uber is working. It's not just price. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's so fast. Okay, so. All right, then. So, uh, listen, I could give you hundreds of examples. RFID technology, radio tags attached to clothes, which mean that you can go online and you can go into a Moscow store and you know within one meter where the dress is, your size, your color, and you have it now. This is fast. People talk to me about mobile payments. I'd say be very careful. You heard earlier from uh, our New York friend, this, it's a very crowded market for some things. Payments, it's nearly done, okay? Huge companies are there. In services, yes, but not in product. Help people to use the systems, yes but don't try to create new ones. Yes, it's a huge market, five trillion online sales by 2025, but huge, huge competition here. But there, are room, uh, there is room in Russia to do some interesting things with uh, uh, biometrics, for example, with, uh, um, but, uh, and, and in places like India, they are demonetizing, they are uh, destroying 80% of the banknotes in India have already been destroyed. But this is a country which is going to overtake the whole world in payments. I, there are better ways to go than payments. Yes, you can look at things like adding face recognition for banks and uh, um, helping people to increase their credit rating when they want a loan. But listen, there are easier things for you to do. Let's have a look at marketing. Marketing is such a huge area and it's so badly done. Most marketing directors hate marketing. I've talked to thousands. Most marketing directors do not like it when someone phones them trying to sell a product. They don't like the email spam. They don't like the texts on WhatsApp advertising product. They do not like pop-up screens on there, and they don't want uh, ads on YouTube. They just find it irritating because after three seconds, they want to kill someone who is stealing their life, right? So where do we go? We have to change from shouting at everybody to something that is much better. And we need to use new tools. So here is an example of a tool which you could start to offer tomorrow to any company to help them in their marketing. All you need is a camera on your screen to watch how the person is looking and a little piece of software and you could start a consulting business tomorrow. This shows us two things, okay? We showed them two pictures selling nappies, two pictures. One, the baby is looking towards the camera. Two, the baby is looking 
at the nappies. And we watched where people look. The customer's eye will always follow the baby. So the customer's eye always looks down at the nappies when the baby is looking at the nappies. We learn this from neural marketing, and so we can prove that one ad is maybe five times as effective as the other. These are small tools. It takes a few seconds. You can make a lot of money. Here is another one. This company was trying to test the product, and they discovered that uh, um, they discovered that the product packages were too shiny. They showed customers the shiny ones, and they showed customers the non-shiny ones. Here, the customers said they liked the shiny ones, but when they put uh, the sensors on their brain, a bit like the sensors you use for computer games and they watched the brain activity, they discovered the customers were not right. The customers said they liked the shiny ones, but in their heart, in their, well, their emotions were triggered by the non-shiny ones. They changed, and the sales went up. <laughs> Neural marketing, watching how the brain is thinking when we see products, very important. Uh, here's another example of innovation. Most mobile, most searches on Google in my country are now on mobile. So the most important thing is to know where the person is. If you know where Patrick Dixon is right now, you would not bother to sell me a product, right? Because the phone company can see that I'm walking up and down in a straight line. <laughs> the phone company knows I'm busy. Actually, the phone company knows I'm a lecturer. The phone company knows I'm here at the Innovation Center and can see my diary. The phone company knows not to phone me now, not to phone me this morning, but to phone me in two hours' time when I'm going to the airport and I will be very relaxed, okay? These, this data is really, really important. And uh, all kinds of, of uh, um, you know, knowing where the person is controls how they think. Uh, because then we know it's raining. <laughs> so we can send them an ad for an umbrella. We, can, uh, we, can, we know what time zone they are in. So we know when they are hungry. We know when they are waking up. We know when they are uh, at, ho at home with their family. 77% of people in the world want an ads which are very personal. But... 64% are turning off all their location data because they don't want to be tracked, <laughs> okay? So what is this about? It's about the most important word I said, which is emotion connected to trust. Trust. Actually, if you are a consultant in digital, one of the biggest things you are selling yourself is trust in your own product and services but also helping companies to build trust. How do we build it? I'll tell you, this is huge. In the UK, the amount of food sold online is 10 times that in Germany. Two countries, very similar. Same population, same smartphones, same web. 10 times difference. Why? Because in Germany, they don't trust the web really important. I tell you, I know it's fine in Moscow. You go to Samara, Tolyati, or Perm, it's different. People trust the web less than they do in Moscow. So building trust is really important. Social media is important for that. Most people in Russia believe a comment on a bulletin board 10 times more than they believe your website. <laughs> okay. So absolutely vital. If you are able to sell services, to build bulletin boards where the customers can express their views, you will build trust for your clients and their sales will grow. Here is an example of location advertising. So, um, so this is Burger, Burger King in the US. Uh, they put all the locations of McDonald's in the app, in their mobile app. So why? They put McDonald's, a competitor, they put all their stores into the Whopper, into, into the 
Burger King app. Here's why. If I walk within 200 meters of McDonald's, Burger King talks to me and says, hey, wrong way. <laughs> Turn around. Burger King is over here. <laughs> and if you come into Burger King, I will give you a hamburger for one cent <laughs> okay. instead of two dollars. This was a fantastic campaign. It depended on location. It built trust because the people have downloaded the app. They love the company. They have given away their information. And they had, tw they had 20 times their normal response to any campaign. It cost them almost nothing. They were on TV, radio. You see, it's all about little data. Remember the waiter who's looking and smiles at one customer, little data, and gets the order for the extra champagne, little data. Um, little data is things like um, a, a store which checks out and gives you a receipt and says, thank you for shopping at Tesco, you just saved $2, or I'm sorry, this is a disaster, you have came to the wrong store today. Because you shopped at Tesco, actually, it cost you $2 more than if you had been to Walmart. I am so sorry. Here is $2. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful. Little data, just in time for one human being who is then very, very happy with the company and trusts them hugely. Okay. Faster delivery. I talked about speed. The trouble with digital is it's too slow, much too slow. Let's take this woman. She's trying on a dress, and uh, she's chosen it, uh, but uh, she's going to have to wait how long for it to be delivered to her home? 24 hours? Listen, you have told me that three, three, three seconds is like a million years. How can you wait 24 hours? Of course, you will go to the shop and buy the dress, right? So we need to make it one hour. One hour delivery is becoming the global standard. Let me ask a question. Imagine that, uh, um, I don't know, your power supply is broken for your computer. You are almost running out of power. You have important meetings all day. You are then catching a flight to Perm. Put up your hands if you would be willing to pay uh, willing to pay at least 500 rubles for someone to come within one hour with a new power supply. Put up your hands. Okay, put up your hands if you'd be willing to pay a thousand rubles for someone to bring the, this, uh, to bring bring this right here into this tent, like Uber. They can say, "Where are you?" Oh, there you are. Here you are. Put up your hands if you pay 2,000 rubles for such a, such a thing, for someone to bring it to you in the restaurant, in the car, wherever you are, at the airport. My friends, you have seen the future. This is where Moscow will go in terms of delivery. Go and make it happen. Make the startups happen. You will discover that uh, just about anything that speeds delivery will make you money using Uber-type technology, and we're seeing it all over the world. In Greece, here is a company when you order your food, it takes them less than 300 seconds to put it into a box. 300 seconds. And then it's on its way to you on a motorbike. You know, this company has grown 300% in 12 months. It's growing incredibly. Okay, travel, another huge area. Just in time, tiny data. Little information for you now about your flight. Um, a, a ticketing, all kinds of things to make the customer's experience better when they're traveling. Predicting events. This is huge, complicated, but this, these things are worth billions of dollars. Okay? I'm talking about big data, the internet of things, the cloud, artificial intelligence, robotics, and the rest. I'm talking about technology to predict which oil rig blows up in the next month. Why? And how to sort it out. We have this already with companies like Infosys. Technology to, to test 
the sugar content of every single apple, testing one million apples every hour, and we know how many weeks it will take for each apple to be perfectly ripe. So we know some of these apples we, we eat in June, some of these apples we eat in September. The computer can sort it using lasers and infrared light. I'm talking about predicting the future of a fruit. I'm talking about predicting the future of a human being. Did you know that your genes, the language of your life, the computer code of your own body, your genes, did you know that all of you are written in the same computer language as, an, as a banana? Did you know? In fact, I can take the computer code from a banana and put 50% of it into your body, Vladimir, and your body cannot tell the difference because you are 50% banana. Did you know that? Did you know uh, that Antonia, Antonina, Anton, Antonina, did you know that I can take 50% of your genes and put them into a, to, into a banana, and it tastes just the same to him. He can't tell the difference. Actually, you are 60% the same as a tomato. Uh, you are 65% the same as a worm, 67% the same as a, a, a rat, and 90% the same as a, a, a cat, and 99.99% the same as a monkey. Why do I say this? For $2,000 today, I can test your genome, all of your genes. It used to cost me $800 million just 20 years ago. What will it cost in 20 years? $5? 20 cents? I think it will be free from the pharmacy. This means I can predict your future. If we tested everyone in this room, all of your genes, and we compare it with your medical records, yeah? And your jobs and where you live, we will start to predict your future. I will know. I will know that this person here will have a heart attack when she is 42 years old. I will even know which of her three arteries will be blocked five years before it happens. I can now start to create her future. I can change her future. I can give her medicines. This is, I am prophesying her future. This is incredibly important and digital is right at the heart of it because it helps us to change the decisions we make about her health. It helps the surgeon. It helps um, when you combine this with incredible imaging. And uh, this again is a huge area. It's great to have the images, but we need the software to understand them. So AI, artificial intelligence, is now better than human beings at detecting problems in the images, okay? Finding cancer. AI will find maybe 10 times as many cancers from the images than human beings. These are huge areas. Um, digitizing, digitizing health so that you've got apps which mean that you can get expert health advice for free. And then you click a button and you get a video call with a doctor for a thousand rubles or something, I don't know. Health treatment, huge areas for digital here in, uh, in technologies of all kinds. These are very big things. But listen, here are some small things for you. Here are startup areas. These are, I'm going to show you some amazing areas which any small company could start to do, okay? The trouble with iPhone, my iPhone at the moment, and it's the same with Samsung and everything, it's, this is blind. It has a camera, but it can't see, okay? It doesn't know what I'm thinking. It doesn't really know what I'm feeling. It doesn't really know my blood pressure. It doesn't know what's going on inside my body. This phone needs some sensors. It needs sensors inside me to measure my blood glucose. To, yes, you've got a sense of a heart rate and things. Let me ask. Put up your hands if you are using a digital device for your exercise to measure your heart rate or how far you run or how you sleep. Put up your hands, okay? This is absolutely huge. The whole of Moscow is using these digital devices, but they are blind. They can hardly see. 
They're getting almost no data from the iPhone watch, almost nothing from the iPhone. But in the next two or three years, you will see huge numbers of new sensors to give sight to these digital devices, and every one of them will create new apps, new innovation, and new futures in healthcare. Incredible things to detect um, uh, heart rate, a diagnosis, diagnosed heart disease, a sugar level in the eye, um, to help old people live at home, all kinds of things. Linked to this is automation. I don't need to talk much about this, but it's a huge trend. The, uh, industry 4.0, automation of every aspect of every factory. It's absolutely huge. It's being really badly done everywhere in the world, even in Moscow. <laughs> okay. There's lots of opportunity here, mainly in services. The technology exists, but the companies are not using it. Why? Because they need someone like Anna Navalina to go and talk to them and say, this is what your competitor is doing. This is the technology. This is what it costs, and I will put it in for you. And I promise you, it will save you so much money, it will pay for itself in 36 months. Cool. Honestly, there are huge opportunities here. You were hearing earlier about making sure that some of your big technologies will work in America. But there's more than one country in the world. <laughs> That's true. But don't forget about the other parts. I'll tell you why. One billion human beings live... Well, one billion human beings are children. Almost all of them are in emerging markets. They're not in America they're not in the European Union or Australia or New Zealand or Canada or all other parts of the world which are slowly dying off, okay, becoming less important. The countries which are growing are emerging markets. One billion people will move from rural areas into cities and then across borders to other cities, just like they have here in this region. Some are moving from Kyrgyzstan to, to Tajikistan. From Tajikistan, they hop on a lorry and they land up in Kazakhstan. They work in Kazakhstan for hmm, six months. They get enough money, they go across the border, and they're soon in Perm. They got another job in Perm, and then they land up in Samara. In Samara, they were in St. Petersburg, and they never came to Moscow. They went from... <laughs> this is the story across the whole world. One billion people will move in 30 years. When they come, we will see more spent on infrastructure, like new power stations and schools, in the next 30 years than in all human history. These are opportunities for every entrepreneur. Don't just think of America. Think of emerging markets. Think of places like this which need your services. And in our world, how will we power 11 billion people by 2065? We will need energy saving at every level. Every app that helps us to save energy, save the world, save money, save the environment, uh, go digital. <laughs> you know, every single way that we can help cities be more efficient, smart cities, uh, smart homes. Uh, um, oh, and by the way, yes, and you've got all this. You have all of it sorted out. You've got new health, new finance, mobile apps, new ways to deliver goods, uh, new ways. Trouble is, it then goes wrong. <laughs> if you want a way to make a huge amount of money as a startup over the next few years, start looking at disaster recovery. Things like going to a business which has only 10 employees, and you say to them, what would happen if there was a fire tonight in your office? See, uh, I don't know. Okay, do you have any backup to your computers? Uh, yes. Where do you keep them? In the office. <laughs> Who backs it up? Me. When did you last back up? Uh, uh, before I went on holiday. When did you go on holiday? Uh, last year. Do you know loss of data? in 30% of cases, causes the closure of the entire business. Did you know that? The data can be lost uh, just through accident. Just the machine is broken. 
or someone steals the machine and the backup drive at the same time because they were both in your briefcase and you left them on the train. Disaster recovery is absolutely huge. Put up your hands if you have lost important data uh, in the last five years. Put up your hands. Have a look around, folks. Put up your hands if you would have paid several hundred rubles, uh, several thousand rubles for someone who could go like that and get it all back for you. Here you have a business. It's in Russia right now. It's a real need, a real need, not a pretend need, or I've got this lovely technology. Would you like to buy it? No, this is a real need. You have customers begging you to help. Please help. I have lost my business. I need to get it back. This is really, really, really important. Okay, and stopping crime, because it's not just the fire or the theft. It's nasty people, and there are a lot of them. Unfortunately, if you can help big companies to be secure, uh, to be able to get things sorted out, to be safe in the cloud, oh, here are some customers for you. They're quite big. Every single one of these big companies is looking for your phone call right now. Why? Because they don't know how to handle security. Yahoo has no idea. Listen, they've just lost three billion names and addresses. And you know they did not even know for three years. Come on. These are big, big opportunities to sort out really urgent problems. Did you know that at, in certain times of the year, 43% of all US e-commerce sales on a credit card are fraud? That means every company in America has a huge problem right now, and it's the same in Russia. And, and with this, I finish now. Okay. And finally, don't start a business unless you've got a plan to sell it. Yeah, you can start the business just to make some money, but why not think about who might be interested in buying it? Why? Because then you can go and start another one. Okay. Hello? So who are you going to sell to? I have good news for you. The biggest companies in the world digitally are not good at innovation. Did you know that most of Google's innovation comes from people like you? They say, yes, please, I'll have your company. Yes, that's so smart. I need this app. That's amazing. Those 20 lines of code are worth $20 million. Join. He said, no, I'm not going to join. I will give you the code, I will write you some more code, I will be an independent consultant, and I will go and start another business. And I will be back next year and with something more to sell to Google. These are really important. And the, why big companies? Because the middle companies are disappearing. 70% of all retail sales in my country are being owned by only seven companies. 70% by only seven. That's only seven people buying milk in my country. Seven people buying potatoes in my country. Seven people buying a mobile app in my country. For 70% of the value, controlled by seven people. You're going to sell to some very big companies. You need to be thinking about their problems. And not just their problems, but it's, it's, so in, it's, it's not just in retail. In factories, uh, in, in things like auto driving, um, in, 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 in supply chains. These big companies will be big buyers of what you're doing. And so there we are. <laughs> okay, we started and we end with the customer. I don't care who the customer is. It could be an individual traveler. It could be a business owner that's just lost three years of data and can't audit his accounts. It could be someone uh, who is trying to buy a pair of shoes, whatever it is. When we focus on their needs, we will find magic. We will find small things that make huge difference that people will be willing to pay a lot, of, a lot for. And remember, there's more to just the gadget. It's more than writing code. It's more than an app. It's also about the service. And most of you here, most of the opportunities in Moscow today for you right now are in the area of services. Take someone else's magic and turn it into magic for everyone. So I wish you all the best as you look to build a better world creating magic with innovations that really matter. And the final test is this. People often come up to me after things like this and they say, I just need a few seconds of your time. <laughs> and after three minutes, I'm bored. Why? Because after three seconds, you have lost the will to live, correct? So 
if you, you have to be able to explain your magic in 60 seconds, because that's 20 times longer than three seconds. Okay. 60 seconds. I say this, if you can't explain in 60 seconds why your idea will make the world a better place, don't even waste anyone's time. Go away and think about a better idea, okay? But when you've got that, if you can explain to me something that is so extraordinary that you get my attention in the first 20 seconds, and then I'm giving you another 20. And after another 20 seconds, I, what? You've done this? But that's extraordinary. Is it working? And you say another, and you say, yes, and we've got three clients. And really? Now I'm going to give you a whole hour, <laughs> okay? So the first 20 seconds of your first 60 seconds is the most 20, important 20 seconds of every entrepreneur's life. Get the story right. If you know why you make a difference and you're passionate that you can do it and you know who your customer is, and what their need is, and how you create magic, and why they will be willing to pay this amount of money, then I wish you every success in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.